Hello friends, Pastor Doug Batchelor. I want to welcome you to our Friday night Bible question of the week, where we're going to be talking about, is it a sin for a Christian to eat pork? Well, maybe. The Bible's pretty clear that we should not be eating pork. Of course, there's going to be thousands of people in heaven that maybe did not understand the truth about things like uh, smoking. Who was it? John Newton. He smoked cigars and he wrote Amazing Grace, but they didn't know. And Martin Luther drank beer, but if I drink beer, it'll be a sin. And then there are going to be people who will be in heaven that maybe ate pork because they don't know that the Bible commands us not to. Let me read it to you from Leviticus chapter 11. And I'll start with the first verse. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals that you may eat among the animals that are on the earth. And he goes through a list. I'll not read the whole chapter of those that are clean and those that are unclean. Among the unclean animals, you read in verse 7, and the swine, though it divides the hoof and has cloven hoofs, it does not chew the cud, it is unclean to you. Their flesh you will not eat, their carcass you will not touch, they are unclean to you. The criteria for being clean or unclean among the animals was the animal must chew the cud like a goat or a cow or a sheep and have a divided or a cloven hoof. Pigs got the cloven hoof, but they're scavengers, they don't chew the cud. Campbell chews the cud, but he's got a paw. They are unclean. That's why Jesus made fun of the scribes and Pharisees that would strain their water to make sure they didn't get a gnat, but they'd eat camel steak. He said, you strain a gnat, you swallow a camel. So yes, the Bible is pretty clear that some animals are clean and some animals were considered unclean. And you might be thinking, well, Pastor Doug, those are laws for the Jews. I would ask the question, uh, why would God want Jews to be healthier than other people? And if you look in Genesis, you'll find out that God made this distinction for all humans because everybody listening to me right now, we're brothers and sisters because we're all related to Noah. Now, God told Noah when he brought the animals on the ark. You can read in Genesis 7, 2, of every clean animal, you are to bring them in by sevens. The unclean animal, they were to bring by twos, the male and his female. Then after the flood, Noah built an altar and he took of all the clean animals and sacrificed to the Lord. You were never to sacrifice an unclean animal to God. That would have been an abomination. And then because all the vegetation had been destroyed by the flood, at that time, as an emergency, man was permitted to eat of the clean animals. In the beginning, God didn't want man to eat any animals, let alone pigs, which are scavengers. You read in Genesis chapter 1, God says in verse 29, See, I've given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth and every tree in whose fruit yields its seed to you it shall be for food. Best diet for people is a vegetarian diet. But God said as an emergency that he would allow them to eat meats, but those are the meats that God has prescribed could be clean. Animals, cloven hoof, chew the cud. If it was in the waters, it needed to have fins and scales. Among the birds, they needed to be your foraging birds as opposed to your, your raptors and your scavengers like the buzzard and the hawk and so forth. They could eat the chicken and the dove and the turkey and so forth for the foraging birds. So uh, God gave some criteria that if man is going to eat meat, they must be the clean meats. In heaven, of course, we're all vegetarians. We're eating from the tree of life. The lions are vegetarians in heaven. So this is God's original plan. But uh, of all the things that a person might eat that the Bible says are forbidden, Pork is really the most abominable. Uh, pigs are scavengers. I've got a little report here from uh, Consumer Report, and this is actually January 2013. What's in that pork? And basically the article goes through saying 70% of all pork that they tested in the slaughterhouses is contaminated with everything from Staphylococcus to uh, Yersinia to uh, Lystra. Um, and not to mention trichina, uh, and they say that um, some of the bacteria that we found in 198 samples proved to be resistant to antibiotics commonly used to treat people. Why? Because they're giving the pigs these antibiotics all the time. It, it is definitely not clean. Uh, also in the slaughterhouses, um, the brains are normally sterile, but during the slaughtering process, meat can become contaminated with bacteria from the animal's skin or gut or from the worker's equipment or the environment, contamination is especially likely to occur if processing lines run too fast. In fact, they tell you in this article 
that um, you should be very careful not to store your pork next to anything else. Keep your uncooked pork away from other foods because it is swimming in parasites and bacteria. And um, a lot of people that uh, eat pork have, a, I think it's 30% higher chance that they're going to get cancer. Not just pork, but other meats as opposed to a vegetarian. Uh, God made some animals that are scavengers in the sky. They're called buzzards. There are scavengers in the waters. They are catfish and sharks. And there are scavengers on the land. They are pigs and dogs. And the Bible says that we are not to eat them. Matter of fact, God de describes, uh, you know, the vilest thing. He says, the pig that was washed is gone to return to wallowing in the filth. Now, pigs will eat virtually anything. And admittedly, they're intelligent, so are dogs, but we're not supposed to eat them. And uh, disease can be transferred from animal to animal. Some people then go to these verses in the Bible and they say, wait a second now, didn't God say when um, uh, Peter had this vision, and you read about this in Acts chapter 10, of this giant sheet that is lowered down from heaven that's full of all kinds of different unclean animals, uh, and God said, Arise, kill, clean, do not call common what I have cleansed. Now, something you need to know is, first of all, this has nothing to do with eating animal. No specific animal is mentioned, just as the sheet's full of all kinds of abominable things. Peter says, Not so, Lord, I have never eaten anything common or unclean. This happens over four years after Christ has died. If Peter had learned from Jesus that it's okay to eat unclean food, why would Peter be saying, not so, Lord, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Peter never takes anything from this vision, can't eat a vision, and eats it. And at the end, he explains the vision to his friends in Acts chapter 10, 28. He said, God has shown me I should not call any man unclean. Peter received the vision so he would then take the gospel to Cornelius and these unclean Gentiles. Had nothing to do with food. Anyone who tries to make that vision say it had something to do with food is being biblically dishonest. That was not the purpose. What about the, uh, the parable where Jesus said in, uh, uh, it's actually not a parable, it was an incident that you find in Mark chapter 7. It says, Then some of the Pharisees came to him, having come from Jerusalem, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defile, that is with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding to the tradition of the elders. There was a tradition of ceremonially washing their hands. They saw the disciples did not do this, and they said, they are going to be defiled. And Jesus contended with them, and he said, you're setting aside the commandment of God. This is verse 8, holding to your tradition, the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do. He said, all too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. And uh, going on down, he said in verse 14, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from the outside that can defile him. But the things that come, uh, but the things that come out of the man are the things that defile him. If anyone has ears, let him hear. And when I first heard that, I thought, oh, good. That means that I can smoke cigarettes and I can drink because there's nothing that enters a man that defiles him. I took that verse the way some other churches are teaching it. I thought, whoopee, I can eat and drink and smoke anything I want because it'll never defile me. Well, that goes against Daniel 1 that says Daniel would not be defiled with the king's food and God blessed him for his determination and he lived longer and he was 10 times wiser. So what is this parable all about? Jesus said to the disciples, explaining it later, you read in verse 18, Mark 7, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive whatever enters a man from the outside cannot defile him, because it doesn't enter his heart but his stomach, and it's eliminated. It goes in and it makes an exit, thus purging all foods. And the word purging, the digestive system is actually hotter than the rest of your body. Christ is saying, you eat some bacteria or germs, it's all purged and it's eliminated. That does not defile your mind and your heart. He said, what defiles a person? He says, it's from within, out of the heart of men, that proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolishness. These are the things that come from within. They defile a man. Some then take this verse to say, see, Jesus said you can eat anything. It can't defile you. That's not at all what Christ is saying. And of course, Jesus makes this statement 
uh, long after, or long before rather, uh, Acts chapter 10, where Peter says, I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So, uh, yeah, pigs are still unclean. The Bible says, don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now, someone is going to say, well, what about 1 Timothy 4, 3 and 5? It says that in the last days, there'll be a group that will arise forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving of those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. And they take that verse and they say, well, right there, you got it. Paul says that any creature can be eaten and all you have to do is pray over it. Now think about it. Do you really believe that? Uh, that would mean it's okay for you to just say, I'm, we're going to have skunk stew. We're just going to say a prayer. And we're going to eat vulture pie. And we're going to eat cockroaches souffle. I mean, it's pretty clear that some things would be revolting, that not any creature should be eaten. Technically, if you take it that any creature can be eaten, that endorses cannibalism. That, well, they're dead. We can eat them. I just say a prayer. Everything's okay. No, that's not at all what he's talking about. Uh, there was a big problem in the days of Paul where the Jews were afraid to eat any food that was sold in the marketplace because it was often offered to pagan idols. And they thought, will I be participating in idolatry? Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, If anyone who does not believe invites you to dinner and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no questions for conscience sake. That means don't say, well, where did you get this food? Uh, this was offered to idols. Do not eat it if he tells you that for the sake of the one who told you. You can look in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 25. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake. He's talking about the clean meats. He's talking about eating you know, the goat and the cow and the sheep and things like that that were clean. Don't ask, was it offered to an idol? So when it says in Timothy, every creature of God is good, nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving, you've got to keep reading. It goes on to say, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. There are foods that God's word says are sanctified, the clean ones. He says, God says you can eat these meats. Those are the clean meats. They are permissible to eat. But God is not saying that you can say a prayer over meats that he declares to be detestable. Let me give you a couple of other verses on this that I think uh, will help make this clear. You can read, for instance, in Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariot like a whirlwind. Talking about the coming of the Lord. To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire in his sword the Lord will judge all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves. Who go to the gardens after an idol. Eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouse shall be consumed together. There it puts eating swine's flesh and mouse burgers in the same category. And he says, they will be consumed. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says we should not defile our bodies. You can read in Isaiah 65, verse 3 and 4. A people who provoke me to anger continually to my face, who sacrifice in gardens and burn incense on altars of brick, who sit among the graves and spend the night in the tombs, graves and tombs were unclean, who eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels. God is very clear all the way through the Bible that pigs are unclean. It says you do not give that which is holy to the pig. The pig was considered the most unclean of animals. And so... Uh, uh, does God want Christians to eat pork? Not if you think your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And even common sense ought to tell you, just because it is so laden in, in salt and sodium and nitrates and fat and carcinogenic components and bacteria, that uh, uh, pigs are not designed. God does not want us eating his um, animal garbage cans he's got out there in the world. So if you want to know more about this, friends, uh, we've got a book. It has a lot of the scriptures I shared and many more. It's called Hogs and Other Hazards. I know you'll enjoy this. We'll send you a free copy. Just go to the link that you find connected with this program. It might be here. It might be here. It might be here. Don't know. Just get it.